Hey guys, welcome back. I'm trialing a new paint today. It's called Chroma A2. So I'm assuming it's quite a highly pigmented professional sort of a, a paint. It does tell you the um, density of the paint, like that one's opaque, little circles all coloured in. Um, so anyway, I'll go through the colours with you in a little minute. Uh, this one I did, oh, would have been a while ago. Um, hopefully that's in frame. Now this was before the, this was used with Global Paints and my glue and water mix. But this was before the transparent paints, the blue, started splitting. So beautiful, beautiful painting. And recently uh, the navy blue and the dark green have been splitting, so I'm uh, just trialing some new paints. So here we go. Um, I have mixed my paints with 70% glue, 30% water, and then because these paints are so thick, I've mixed them uh, two parts pouring medium to one part paint. You can turn it upside down stays there for a while so yeah really really quite thick these paints are much thicker than the global the global i have to mix one to one and these i've mixed two to one and i'm still getting quite a nice mound on top i'll climb up my ladder and show you my mound so to speak there you go you see the little wriggle that it's making on top mound on a mound it's probably thicker than i would normally use if I was doing the global so that's it there it's really bubbly I've only just made this paint it's, it seems to be a lot frothier than the global there's heaps of bubbles on top so I probably should have made the paint last night I'm going to try and mix my paints the night before so that it's you know had a chance to sit and de-bubble defroth the night before okay so treadmill silicone as usual these cups of paint I have got oh what did I do I did 60 grams of pouring medium to 30 grams of paint so two ounces of pouring medium to one ounce of paint and I'm going to put three drops in each color one two three except for the white I haven't trialed this these paints at all on a little sample sheet. I'm just going going for it on the big canvas. Well, it's not a big canvas, it's a 30 by 40 centimetre or 12 by 16 inch. I'm gonna give this a really good stir. Even if you leave your paint sit overnight, when you add the silicone, you have to stir them again. So they're gonna get all bubbly again, but maybe not so bad if you let your paint sit overnight. I'll have to trial that and see if it makes any difference. I'm going to torch anyway, so I'm going to pop the bubbles, but little bubbles, they tend to um, bring up little tiny cells. So I'm going to do three cups. I'll do two layers of paint in each. Once I flip my cups over, I'm going to use a bit of white around them as a bit of a base coat. So I've kept my cool colours separate from my warm colours because I don't want to put the blue next to the yellow and make green. So I'm just, probably get a little bit of green, but that's okay. I just don't want them right next to each other. And this little turquoisey colour I used, um, a mixture of blue and green. I just bought a few sample well, they weren't sample pots. They were on sale. They're just these little pots. I got them for four ninety five. They were on clearance. So I just bought a few colours, um, and then I'm mixing my own colours. I'm not that thrilled with the the turquoise that I made, but I just went with the two, the red and the the blue and the green that I had. It probably wasn't the best choice, but that's what I went with. So hopefully this is going to work out nicely. 
Okay, and some more white, and then I'll start my next layer. Did you guys see the pour that I did using the Montmartre paint? I was trialing those, those paints as well. That came out really well. I did blues and greens with my um, glue and water mix. So that worked out really nice. No sweet paint. There does seem to be something happening with the global paints and, and riot. Um, I've, been I've been told that they're changing names, but then other people have said they're changing the actual recipe. I don't know. I guess we'll find out when they tell us. I think that they're just changing names um, to come in line with some of the, the canvases and other products with the same name. And I think that the recipe will be the same, but can't guarantee it. I don't know exactly. I might just change this up a little bit and put the yellow or the orange next to the blue. And then I can put that one on. And then the red. use all of that red it can be a bit dominant I'm not sure which colors are going to be more dominant in this pour hard to say uh, do I want to finish that off maybe just a little bit in the middle mm, no I won't because <laughs> then I'm going to get green I don't want green right in the middle Got plenty of paint and then I also, as I said, I've made up a bit of extra for like a base coat just to help the paint slide around. So I won't scrape those out. I'll just keep the little bits left. I'm going to try something different with my flipping. Because you know how I always get those lines? I'm going to see if I can sort of flip in a bit of a weird shape, a bit of an angle. We'll see. Now this base coat, um, I made that three to one. So with these, as I said, I did two parts pouring medium, one part paint. Um, a couple of them, well actually probably all of them, I did have to add a splash of water, they were still quite thick. The base coat I did three parts pouring medium to one part paint. I may even be able to get away with actually pouring with three to one and not adding any water at all because I'm still getting a mound, albeit a small-ish mound. It's still a mound. Just going to pop a little bit of that white on while the paint's sitting there. It still feels relatively thick even though it's a three to one mix. So this is not for negative space, this is just to help the paint flow around the canvas. So it really doesn't matter if it's a bit contaminated with some other colours that I've picked up when I've been pushing paint around. It does feel rather thick base coat. It's always difficult when you start a new brand of paint. You can't, kind of have to go back to the beginning with your experiments because you're not sure what it's going to do. And I've been using Global for two years um, and it's yeah, just changing, seeing how I go with a different brand. I'm just going to pop these bubbles in the white base coat. See how frothy it is? You can see all the little dots when I'm popping the bubbles. Very, very frothy. I'm definitely going to have to try and mix my paints the night before. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to flip it over. Oh, look at the green. I didn't want green. Can you go over there for a minute? Just 
flatten a little flip. <laughs> and then this one can sort of come over here and kind of go like that. I don't know, just anything to try and not get those stripies just for a change. Woohoo! Okay, now while that's sitting there, I'll just tell you about my colours. We have cadmium orange, opaque, cadmium scarlet, opaque. Oops, where's the front of that one? Phthalo blue, semi transparent, or semi opaque, you can call it either. Cadmium yellow, light, opaque. And the titanium white is opaque. The turquoise I used a little bit of green and the phthalo blue and a bit of white to make my turquoise. So that's how I did that. Oh, this is exciting. I knew I was going to get a little bit of um, green, but, you know, with, with if you're using blues and yellows, you're bound to get green, aren't you? Now, popping bubbles, but I'm not getting any cells as yet. Can you see how, can you see all those little bubbles that are popping? There's just thousands of them. And I can't get too close. I can't actually get close enough to pop all the bubbles because I'll get way too many cells. So I'm just going to go over this very, very lightly. Let the heat of the torch go down through that thick paint. It's going to take a while. See them? They're coming up. They don't come up automatically straight away. You have to wait. It might take 10 seconds. So don't just go over and over and over. Just wait and see what happens before you torch some more. So these cells are looking pretty. I just wish they didn't have all that speckledy look from the, the bubbles, but that's okay. Lesson learned. Mix your paints the night before with this particular brand. They're very, very frothy. Now, as you can tell, I've torched straight away. Normally, you know, I cover my whole surface or half the surface and then I torch. But I wanted to see um, just how these paints would react so the cells are popping up and they're growing, as you can see, growing. And um, I am going to try for some bigger cells in, in some upcoming pores. I don't always have to have them so small. I'm just going to torch a bit over here. A few little areas that need some cells. Right, that'll do. I would like to see a little bit of background. Um, I should probably get a corner catcher. Just in case, I've just made these with some offcuts of cardboard. Now, the cells are looking quite big already and they're kind of bumping into each other, which to me suggests right off the bat that my mix is a little bit on the thin side. Maybe I didn't need to add water, just stick to the two to one and not add that splash of water. But I was getting a really big mound. The same thing happens when I use the Elmer's school glue. I get a really big mound, but then when I pour out, my cells stretch a lot. They grow a lot. Oh, let's just tilt and see what happens without that corner catcher for the moment. So I'm liking the fact that I don't have my stripes through the centre, which is a telltale of my three cups. So I don't have that, which is good. I'm just going to get that paint to go into the corner. Whoops, I don't want it to run off the edge just yet. I oh, missed the white, missed the corner there. Never mind. Um, let's do this corner down here. Turn it around so that I can tilt towards you. Because the weight of the paint's kind of up this end already, so we use that to my advantage and just tip down that way. I don't really like the green I'm getting in it, but. I'll wait, I'll reserve judgment. Let it 
touch the collar on, tip it back before you let go of your corner catcher. Otherwise, all the paint that you've just saved beautifully on that corner will just all go. Oh, that little bit there can go. Go, go, go. Okay. It's very orange, isn't it? Cells are moving lovely. I do think I could have gone with a thicker mix though. But we will see. I did want bigger cells. I did. So now if your mix is too thick, you're going to get really small cells. So let's go for this corner down here. I'm just wondering, see this this colour here has is kind of making it a little bit on the muddy side with the yellow. It's kind of going an icky green colour. So that maybe was not a, a good choice. I could, should have maybe gone with a lighter turquoise. But as I said, it was it was the only colours that I had to make turquoise. I normally wouldn't make that shade of turquoise. But that's all I had with the green mix. Touch the corner. Come back. And then let go. Take your hands around the edge so that you don't drip into your beautiful painting. And just slowly, slowly head for the other corner. You can see where the weight of the paint is, move it so it's about here and then you can easily go for that last corner. And I do want it to, oops, let go. I do want it to kind of go over that white corner there, so. Wow, look how bright it is, you guys. My goodness, these paints are really, really bright. Look at that blue. It's just amazing. I'm going to leave that little white corner there. That's, that's fine. Now, these up here, these cells are a little bit overstretched. Let me see if I can just move the weight of the paint down a tad. No, I think I'll leave it like that. So for me, they, they're a bit overstretched over here. Um, I don't know that I can improve on that. Let's have a look. I'll see. Now, if you fiddle too much, you, rip, you run the, the risk of overstretching other things that you really do like for the sake of, of that. It's hard to get those back into a round shape though. You can see up here stretching. I'm just going to leave them. Yep. So to prevent those from overstretching, I could have A, tilted a little bit before I torched and or B, made my mix a little bit thicker. That would stop my cells from overstretching a little bit. But it's so bright, isn't it? It's so pretty. Do you guys like the bigger cells for a change? Because I, I normally do smaller cells, don't I? That's what happens when um, I tilt to cover most of it and then, and then torch end up with smaller cells. Um, I just need to cover in this corner. I didn't quite go over that corner where the white was. Definitely will try this again um, and improve on my, this colour. Didn't really turn out that well, that colour. It's made, made things a little bit of a icky green. 
and I think I'll try and make it a bit thicker so stick to the two to one and not add any water and then I'll see how that goes and then that will then I'll decide if I want to actually change brands and, and go to a different brand that's not going to split and cause me grief every time I use it okay let me get my grubby gloves off actually I'll just run my palette knife under there catch the drips and then I'll take you in for a close-up Maybe leaving the yellow out would have been a better option. I mean, I like the little pops of yellow in there, but yeah, it's just gone a little bit murky looking. Now I'll just take these gloves off and then I'll show you the original again. And you can see the difference. They're actually quite similar. This new one I've done today has got a little bit more orange in it. And these cells are a bit smaller. These cells are a bit bigger. What do you think? Similar, hey? Twinsies. I really like how the blue is popping. Um, just don't like that with the yellow. So I may well do these again. I've still got my... My cups here got a little bit of paint left in them. Really like this orangey red there. Didn't get a lot of it coming up. Uh, yeah, probably will get more if I just make my mix a tiny bit thicker. So I'll do that and um, I'll do another pour. But yeah, it's really pretty. Do you like the bigger cells? See, I'm in two minds about the cells because... I prefer my cells to be nice and round um, and I get that when I have smaller cells. These are bigger but then they, they do lose their more round shape. See how they're kind of bumping into each other and when they bump in together um, they lose their round um, circle because they've bumped into each other so they kind of go flat on the sides and that's what happens if your mix is too thin. They don't stay separate. So, but hey, it's my first try with this new paint. Um, I will give it a go again, as I said, with a thicker mix. And to see if I can get the nice round cells that I crave so much. So It's pretty though, hey. Okay, thanks for watching. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.